Hi everyone and welcome to Biostat Squid. In this tutorial I will show you how to create a volcano plot and customize it step by step in R. So let's dive in. So for this tutorial I will use the human COVID T cell single cell RNA sec data set from Batcher et al. You can read more about the data set and obtain it for free in the link I will post down below. But I, I already uh, pre-processed the data and carried out the differential gene expression analysis between severe and healthy samples of TFH-like cells. So if you want to follow this tutorial and actually um, do it yourself in R, you can just uh, download the DG results from my webpage. Okay, so to build a volcano plot, you just need five simple steps. Step one is to set up your script. So to set up your script, I always like to uh, clean my environment, especially if you use R a lot, you uh, might have hidden objects in your environment and we want to just clear that out and start from, from scratch, let's say. Okay, we need to load our relevant library. So for volcano plots, we will just need a tidyverse, of course, then or color brewer might come in handy if you want to um, play around with colors. And finally, ggrepel will be essential when we want to add annotations to our volcano plot. Okay, so let's get the data ready. The first step when making a volcano plot in R is of course to load uh, the results from differential gene expression analysis. And for this we need to first set our path, which is the directory or the folder where our data is found. So we need to tell R to, um, to find it in that particular folder. So we set the working directory as our path and now we can actually read the CSV file which contains our different gene expression analysis results and we do this with a read.csv function and as you can see here it read our file and we have a data frame stored as df object so if we click on it we see we have the gene symbols we have a column with the p-values from the differential gene expression uh, analysis p-adjusted values and the log to fold change we might have more columns that's not a problem but we just need essentially these three even um we will work with p-values but of course you can work with p-adjusted values too it depends on what your data set looks like so now that we imported the differential uh, gene expression results, we are ready to uh, create our volcano plot. Okay, so if you remember from my previous video, a volcano plot is essentially a scatter plot. So for that, we can call ggplot. We will specify that the data we want to use is stored in our df object. And in the aesthetics, uh, we specify what we want represented in the x-axis and in the y-axis. In the x-axis, we will represent log to fold change. And in the y-axis, we want minus log 10 uh, p-values. You can also use p adjusted values if that works better for you, if that's what you're looking for. So in our case, you see that we only have p values, but you might already have a column with the calculated minus log 10 p values, in which case you can just input here the name of that column. Otherwise, you can use the minus log 10 function, which will calculate the minus log 10 of those values. And now we just add geom point and it will create our scatter plot. So here it is. It looks uh, quite okay, but um, obviously it can be improved and it doesn't look really nice. So we will slowly customize it to make it look more professional and publication ready. So a common addition to volcano plots is to show the thresholds. So threshold lines indicate where the limits are. So for example, which genes are considered significant and which are not and which genes are considered upregulated, which genes are considered downregulated, and which genes don't have a significant fold change. So for this, we will need to add two vertical lines for log to fold change thresholds and one horizontal line for the p-value threshold. 
So we will do uh, just that with geom vertical line and then we have to specify it where, where the x intercept is. In this case we want two vertical lines. So it's really up to you what threshold you decide. It depends on your data set. For this example we will use um, thresholds of minus uh, 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. So these are the thresholds for our log two fold changes, which means that, for example, genes with a threshold over 0 0.6 will be considered to be upregulated and genes um, under uh, 0 0.6 will be considered to be downregulated. We can, of course, specify the color and even the line type. So dashed, let's see. And now we will add a horizontal line for the p-value threshold. Um, and we can set the p-value threshold to be 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.05, I mean. We will leave the rest of the parameters this way. So now if we run this again, intercept, uh, oh, of course, we need to change this to horizontal line, so h-line. And now this is our plot, and you can see that the two uh, threshold lines appeared for the log two fold changes, and here we see the threshold line for the p-values. Nice, so now we've got the main uh, structure of our volcano plot and now comes the fun part, which is actually customizing it to make it look uh, pretty and publication ready. Great, so now that we have the main skeleton of our volcano plot, it's time to customize it. A great way to start is to set our theme, and the theme sets the general appearance of our plot. So we can customize the thickness of the axis, the size of the axis labels, the position of the legend, if you don't know where to start, you can just Google ggplot themes and you can always use them as base and then edit the specific parts you want to change. So if you're familiar with ggplot, you might know that you can just edit specific elements um, here, but I find it cleaner to just set our general theme and I'm going to do it just that. And now if I run my volcano plot again, you will see that the appearance of the plot changed. It looks so much nicer now. And uh, setting the theme is quite useful because you can just copy paste it in front of any plot you want to do and you can keep a consistent look across or appearance across all of your plots. Perfect, so our volcano plot looks much more readable now and I don't know, feel free to experiment with the theme options. Almost anything is possible. And if you were looking for something in particular, I just recommend you to Google it so you can uh, customize it the way you like it. Okay, so you might want to customize the point color or size of your volcano plot. For example, a popular option is to color the genes depending if they are up or down regulated. So to highlight significantly differentially expressed genes, we will add a column to the data frame to specify if they are up or down regulated, depending on their log to fold change, if it's positive or uh, negative respectively. For this, we will take our uh, data frame and we will add a new column called differentially expressed, and we will set a default va value of no. Uh, no, <laughs> there we go. So now if we check our data frame, we created a new column which uh, takes the values of no for all genes. There we go. And now we will take that same uh, column, but just subset to those genes that have a log to fold change higher than 0 0.6. Remember that's our threshold to be considered upregulated. And, and we will also... There we go. Ensure that we only take genes with a p-value lower than 0 0.05. There we go. And they will be considered upregulated. There we go. And we will do the same for downregulated genes, except they will be genes with a log to fold change lower than minus uh, 0 0.6. So they will be considered downregulated. So now if we run these lines again, we will see that now uh, genes with a log to fold change lower than uh, minus 0 0.6 and with p-values lower than 0 0.05, because they have to be uh, significant, will have the tag down. And I don't know, maybe some genes that are upregulated. Uh, let's see, upregulated genes have p-value, of course, lower than 0 0.05 and log to fold change uh, higher than 0 0.6.
Perfect. So now we can just color our uh, plot according to uh, this new column. Okay, so what I will do is just uh, copy it down here again, but you can just add it to the original object. So now we just have to go to the aesthetics and specify that our color will be according to this uh, column, differentially expressed. So with a scale color manual, we can manually edit the colors of our points. We can also override the labels, which would otherwise be up, down and no with the label option. Perfect. So now we might want to edit the axis labels and the limits of what, what's actually shown on the plot. And we can do this setting chord cart Cartesian, uh, which we have here. There we go. Don't forget to add the plus. And chord ca Cartesian actually sets the Y limits to whichever numbers we want. Let's say maybe 200 and uh, the X limits in this case from minus 10 to plus 10. Perfect. We can also decide the breaks of our axis. For example, we want the x-axis to have breaks every two. So minus 10, minus 8, minus 6, uh, minus 4, and so on, to make it look a bit nicer. And now we can also change the names of our labs. And now we can also give the legend a title. In this case, we want to show genes that are up or down regulated in severe patients. And we can also change the X and Y labels. So if you see this expression, it's a trick to basically have the subscript for log 2 fold change and minus log 10 p-value. So if I run this again, let's see if it worked. Um, uh, seems like it didn't. Oh yeah, I added a plus at the end. So if I just run this, you will see our plot looks uh, much nicer now. So as you can see, we have the x-axis breaks, which we customized. We also customized the title of our, of our legend, and you can see the subscript uh, for the 10. But uh, if you just want a different title, you can just uh, write it in text. So for example, if I just want to um, name my x-axis log 10, uh, P values of uh, my genes, this will work too. Okay, but we will keep it to expression lock to uh, full change. Perfect. Uh, we might want to add a title to our plot, of course. Um, that can be done easily with uh, ggtitle. So in my case, I want to give it a title. So we add a plus at the very end. And our title is THF like cells in severe COVID uh, versus healthy patients. There we go. And now we have our title. Fantastic. So now we have a really nice volcano plot, uh, but it might be missing the names of certain genes of the plot. Sometimes we want to add gene annotations. Remember at the start, we loaded the library ggrepel, so we can add annotations based on a column with geom text repel. This will add the gene symbol annotations next to the points without covering each other. You can decide which gene names to show. If you use the column gene symbol, so if we go back to our data frame, if you use this column, all of the gene symbols will be displayed on the plot. So the result will be a bit too overwhelming. You won't be able to read anything. And to be honest, um, at least when I tried my laptop kind of collapsed. So I really don't recommend you to try it because we have more than 30,000 uh, genes. And clearly we don't need our 30,000 genes to be displayed. You might want to show just the top 10 upregulated genes, or for example, you want to show a specific list of interesting genes you want to highlight. And the way you do it is the same in all cases. You will just need to adapt it to your specific case. Basically, we need to create a new column, which will contain the gene names of those genes you want to show and NA if you don't want the gene to be displayed. So, for example, let's show the top 30 statistically significant genes that are either upregulated or downregulated. So first we need to find out what are or for our top 30 differentially expressed genes. And we can do this with head. So we'll, we'll take, we will order the data frame by uh, p value and we will print the gene symbol. And now we will print the 31st genes. 
So these are our top 30 differentially expressed genes. And now we will create a new column called the label, so differentially expressed label. And we can do this with one line of code. Basically, we will just use an if else statement. So if our gene symbol is found in our list of top 30 differentially expressed genes, then we will assign it the gene symbol. Otherwise, we will just give it an NA value. And now if we check our data frame, we have a new column with NAs. And if it's among our top 30 differentially expressed genes, it will actually contain the name of the gene symbol. So there's only 30 uh, differentially um, expressed genes we want to show. So uh, whatever genes you want to display, it should look like something like this, a new column with the, the gene symbols you want to display, or you can actually substitute them by their actual long names. That's up to you. And then NA for all the genes you do not want displayed. And that is basically it. And now we can just take our uh, previous object and just add a new line with geom text repel. So here we go, text repel, and we will set the max overlaps to inf. Uh, this shows all labels. And don't forget to add our label in aesthetics, and we want to use the column D label. So this should work. And now you can see our labels. Really nice. Uh, this warning message just tells you that most of the genes are containing missing values, which is actually true because you assigned an NA, if you could remember. So that's basically it. And of course, you can find more about Geom Text Repel, and it would tell you how to add, for example, borders around the, the genes and so on. So once we're happy with how our volcano plot looks like, we can export it as a PDF, PNG, TIFF, you can choose. You can, of course, use the export option here, uh, save as, image or PDF, but I prefer to just uh, save it using um, OR. So I will just show you, I will, uh, to make it shorter, I will just give this a name, volcano plot. So now this object is a ggplot object, and now I just have to open a file that will contain my plot. Imagine I want to save it as a PDF. So file, I just give it a name, um, myvolcanoplot.pdf. And I can set the width, I can set, well, it has many options. Now I just call whatever I want to print in that file. So in this case, I want to print my volcano plot. And now once I'm done, I just close the file dev off. And now we have a look at my folder. I can see my volcano plot here. So that is the end of our tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.